Is your novel revision feeling out of control? Are you having nightmares about how messy the whole process has become? Coming up, I've got a little revision hack for you that has saved me hours of anxiety, revision time, and lost sleep. After trying my Frankenstein method, you won't ever want to go back to your old revision ways again. Stay tuned. Welcome my fellow writers and revisers. I'm Jessica Brody, author of Save the Cat Writes a Novel, the creator of the Complete Novel Revision course, and the founder of the Writing Mastery Academy, where you can get access to all my online writing courses for less than the cost of your monthly Starbucks addiction. Revising can be messy. As someone who thrives on order and checklists and clean, unmarked documents, I've never liked how messy the revision process can feel. You've got tracked changes, turning your pages into Jackson Pollock paintings, comments cluttering up the margins, unfinished subplots dangling about, and torn apart scenes strewn through your manuscript like the debris after a hurricane. I don't like it. That's why I invented the Frankenstein revision. Okay, so I actually probably didn't really invent it. For all I know, it's been around since Mary Shelley herself, but I have come to love it. So I thought I'd share it with you today just in case you too suffer from messy manuscript phobia. Since inventing the Frankenstein method, it's become one of my favorite things ever, and I rarely revise a manuscript any other way at least not for the first few drafts, when things are really getting shuffled around. I even recently used it to revise the second draft of my upcoming nonfiction book, Save the Cat Writes, a young adult novel. Why is it called a Frankenstein revision or a Frankenstein method? Well, what do you first think of when I tell you to picture Frankenstein's monster? I personally think of this guy, mismatched body parts stitched back together. And that's what this revision process is. Instead of revising or rewriting your manuscript in your existing document, you stitch various parts together in a new document. Here's a step-by-step -step breakdown of how I do it. Hint, this method works best if you have more than one computer monitor, but you can achieve the same results by splitting your single monitor into multiple windows. Step one, open your current draft. Okay, so open your first or current draft on one screen or window. This will be what you pull text from. This should not change or be edited at all throughout the process. Think of it as a locked version. Step two, open a separate blank document. Open a brand new blank document on a second screen or window. This will become your next draft. Name it something that will help you identify it, like book title, second draft, or book title, Frankenstein draft. I actually like to name my files book title, second draft, rebuild, for reasons that will make sense in the next step. Step three, rebuild your story. As you work through your revision plan, you'll be copying and pasting sentences, paragraphs, or maybe even full scenes from your first document, the current draft, into your second document, the next draft. This text may or may not appear in the same order in your next draft, which is why it's helpful to have the full intact current draft open on another screen, so you can pick and choose what to pull from and when. Any sections that don't yet exist in your current draft, but need to be added to the next draft, can be written in as you go. Or you can use placeholders to remind yourself of what will eventually go there and then write those things in later. It's up to you. These can be full scenes, subplots, new threads, or even just a chunk of dialogue that needs to be written. I personally like to start at the beginning of my next draft and work through the story chronologically, copying and pasting parts that I do have from the first draft and writing in parts that I don't yet have as I go. I essentially rebuild my story based on the next draft storyboard I've created in my revision plan. If you don't yet have a revision plan or want to learn more about how to build your next draft storyboard, check out my complete novel revision course, link in the description below, which will walk you step by step through the process of creating a revision plan and storyboards, plus provide you with handy checklists for your revision to make sure you're including everything you need to in the next draft. Step four, stitch things together as necessary. As you rebuild your story, you'll probably find that the text doesn't seamlessly fit together piece by piece, especially when you're arranging a lot of scenes. You'll probably need to add some stitching in places to make the story flow properly. For example, if you've pulled a scene from near the end of your first draft and are now putting it closer to the start of the second draft, you'll probably need some timeline stitching to make it work sequentially and possibly some tweaks to the actual scene to remove any references to plot points or events that haven't happened yet or characters who haven't yet been introduced. Step five, continue building and stitching as necessary until you're finished. 
Repeat steps three to five, copying and pasting from your current draft into your new draft, adding in any new text when necessary and fusing it all together until you've worked through your revision plan and the next draft is complete. Now you have a Frankenstein revision. You'll probably have to go back through it a few more times to make sure all that stitching is really seamless and there are no unsightly limbs or fingers hanging out where they shouldn't be. I find this method to be so much more organized and controlled and it helps me gauge where I am in the process at all times because I'm literally rebuilding my story from scratch. Also, copying and pasting from my current draft, instead of trying to revise in the draft, helps me to see the story more clearly and makes it easier for me to let things go that really don't serve my next draft. It's so much harder to delete something from your draft than it is to simply not add it to the next draft. It's sort of a psychological trick. Deleting makes it feel like you're erasing hard work. Leaving it in the old draft and choosing not to copy and paste it into the next draft just reminds us that it's still there and it has its place in the old draft, but not necessarily in the new one. So if you're looking to shake up your revision process, try this Frankenstein method with your next draft and see if it helps you tackle that revision monster once and for all. And remember that complete novel revision course is there for you if you need some extra help. Not only do I walk you through all three levels of the revision process, the developmental edit, detailed edit and line edit. I give you a comprehensive list of checkpoints to help you self-diagnose your own manuscript and find areas where your next draft can be improved upon. Once you've passed all the checkpoints, you know you have a stellar finished draft that you can pass along to readers, agents, editors, or wherever you're going next in the process. It's like having me as your on-demand revision coach holding your hand through the entire revision process. I even revise a novel right along with you so you can see exactly how I build my next draft storyboards in the developmental edit, revise my scenes in the detailed edit, and polish my sentences in the line edit. Thank you so much for watching. If you liked what you saw today, please tap that like button and while you're at it, you might as well subscribe so you don't miss my next writing video. Until next time, happy revising.